smash it. Hello, welcome and thank you for clicking on my video. In this video, I'll be repairing the brakes on my 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2. Over the last few weeks, months, I've noticed that the brakes are not what they used to be. I always find it easier to crack the wheel lug nuts while the car is on the ground. I always like to place the wheel that I've just removed underneath the vehicle as an added layer of protection should the jack stands fail. The disc rotors are very glazed and grooved this would be contributing to my poor brake performance. To remove the disc rotor, I first need to remove the brake caliper, and to do this, you remove the two 7 8 inch bolts securing the carriage to the suspension strut here and here. First I crack the bolts with a breaker bar and then run them out with the rattle gun. These dual piston calipers are very heavy and if they were to be left hanging they would definitely damage the hose. So I like to tie them up with a bit of wire to support them. Before the disc rotor can be taken off the hub there is a small o-ring that needs to be removed. I personally have not come across this before and I don't really understand what the purpose of the o-ring is. They're a bit glazed. taking this opportunity to clean up any of the surfaces ready for installation. I don't know if this next step is necessary, but I marked the hubs left and right so they would go back in the same position. I dare say it's my OCD kicking in. Moving on to the left hand side. Here I need to release the steering lock so I can turn the wheel. The left hand side is the exact same process as the right hand side. Got the ratchet there if you need it.
Just got back from the machine shop where we've had both the discs rotors machined. I purchased a generic set of brake pads from the machine shop where I had the disc rotors machined. Total cost for machining and pads was $130. Pad sensors and pads. The squealer is a little spring and as the brake pads reach their end of life the squealer contacts the disc rotor and it makes a squealing noise alerting the owner of the vehicle that their brake pads need replacing. Before winding back the pistons in the brake calipers, it's always a good idea to check the level of your brake fluid reservoir. This spring can be a little bit tricky to remove and replace, but with a little patience it's quite doable. This is an opportune time to also check the CV joint boots for cracking and damage. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upcoming video on how to change a CV joint boot. I'm using an old brake pad and a G-clamp to push the pistons back into the caliper. I'm applying a little grease to the carriage sliders. A little bit of grease that was supplied with the brake pads applied to the caliper. The grease helps to prevent brake squeal that can sometimes occur. Looks like toothpaste.
I must have frightened the spring when I picked up the screwdriver because as soon as I did it popped straight in. Prepping the inside of the rotor where it meets the hub, removing any rust and scale. Now for that o-ring, I found that a little grease applied to it helped it pop straight in. Once the rotor was installed, it was just a matter of refitting the caliper and torquing up the mounting bolts. The right hand side was just a repeat of the left, although it did go a lot smoother. Please forgive the skin, but at time of recording it was 9 o'clock in the morning and already 30 degrees Celsius.
get an easier side once you've done the hard side. It's always the way. And there we have it, both front disc rotors machined and new brake pads fitted. Always a good idea to recheck your fluid levels and that it hasn't overflowed and is sitting at the correct level. slowly pumping the brake pedal to bring the pistons back out so the pads contact the rotors. I always like to add a little anti-seizing compound to the wheel lugs. I run the lug nuts up with a gun and then final torque them to manufacturer specifications. Lastly, a test drive to make sure that everything is performing how it should be.
so. I gently stab the brake a few times to make sure everything feels good. I'm happy to say everything feels good. Well that's it for another video. If you've made it to the end and you like my content please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, only a moment of your time and it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments down below as I'd really like to hear from you. And we'll see you on the next one.